Thank you, everybody, for attending our uh, December 14, 2022 Ortelius Visionaries, but we are now calling it Holiday Gathering since it's so close to Christmas. I'm Tracy Reagan, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how the Ortelius Evidence Store manages SBOMs and aggregates SBOMs to what we call the logical um, application. First, it's really important to understand that developing software in a microservice architecture is complex. It's complex because of the amount of dependencies. Uh, even Monolith have a lot of dependencies, especially when we start thinking about open source packages. And according to uh, Tyler Jewell, he says that software systems have become so complex that it's getting too difficult for humans to reason about the systems they design, which is the complexity of microservices. And he says that complexities can span even small teams who could have a, a broader uh, committer graph than a group of 10,000 engineers. So in other words, it doesn't take very long for the number of dependencies and open source packages to turn into a massive, massive hairball. And securing the software supply chain has leaped to the top of C CIO and CDO's imperators for 2022, and I believe it's going to continue in 2023. Now, driving this, um, it's not just CIOs and CDOs, it's the president himself. Uh, in May of 2021, uh, President Biden uh, pursued a cybersecurity executive order to establish the use of, of SBOMs to show your software supply chain. So in other words, if you want to uh, do business with the U.S. government, you need to have an SBOM, and that SBOM then can show all the dependencies. We learned this because a year ago, uh, literally one year ago, uh, December 9th actually is when this, this broke, Log4j taught us how important understanding your dependencies can be. Um, it, Log4j is used by millions of developers. It's a core component for uh, Java developers. And according to uh, Semantics, uh, they claim their intrusion detection system block more than 93 million Log4j related exploited attempts uh, between the 9th of December and the 21st uh, of December. Now, what we uh, learned was a lot of organizations couldn't answer the question, where are we using Log4j, who's consuming it, and most importantly, what version? They had no insights on that. So, there is a demand now for SBOM and software composition analysis, SCA, composition, uh, consumption. We have SBOMs, but oftentimes if you generate them along your pipeline, what we considered is a checkbox. We are doing an SBOM. We created an SBOM. So what, if it's sitting there in a text file in your, in your pipeline directory where you ran your build, does it help us? Probably not. Uh, and the most pressing issue, according to the Software Bill of Materials and Cybersecurity Readiness Report uh, done by the Linux Foundation, one of the most pressing issues was 62% um, of the overall sample indicated the, the need for a consistency on best practices to integrate the production and consumption of SBOMs into our software development practice. And in my world, that means the, de the DevOps pipeline. <laughs> So we are building a central evidence store of software composition intelligence. Um, Ortilius is a data store, and we can pretty much store any data about the objects that we manage and, and, and version, and those focus on microservices. So what Ortilius is doing in terms of collecting this data, it's pulling information from tools like Cyclone DX or OSV or Helm or Argo, Quay and GitHub, and it's pulling that information in to create federated insights and logical application compositions. So we have the high-level microservice composition, uh, and we know that for each microservice, but in a cloud-native microservice architecture, how do you indicate that at the ap application level when the application level is a bit obfuscated? So Ortelius is pulling this information, creating these federated insights, uh, including microservice versions, which then can provide logical application versions. 
If we know the, the applications who are using the microservice, we could obviously create a blast radius for a microservice so we know who it impacts. We can also show the difference between two application release candidates based on a change at the microservice level. We can track the inventory, create logical application SBOMs because we can aggregate that information up, as well as logical application vulnerabilities. We can track drift, show differences between environments, show the ownership of applications, the application to microservice dependencies, and super important, we can centralize the OS uh, search pa uh, packages so we can do a centralized search. So look for Log4j in one place. So how does it work? Well, first, a producer of a service registers uh, their service to the, the Ortilius catalog. Now we are working on a backstage integration. If you're a backstage user, user we, I will soon be able to pull that information from backstage. Once that's done, the application team can define through the user interface or through a TOML file what their application consumes. So they can say, this: we want to create a baseline version of our, our application. This is what we know the application uses. Now, over time, the, service, uh, the, the services under the covers will change. And that's what creates new versions of the consuming application. So if a microservice changes and it has a new version as collected by Ortilius, then the logical applications, not just one, but any application that consumes that service is going to get a new a release candidate or a new version number. So now the application teams know that something changed and they have a new, uh, a new release candidate. And along with that new release candidate comes SBOMs and new vulnerabilities, new swagger information, and a whole lot of other things. The results, though, is we can start tracking the blast radius of these components and how they're moving across the, um, the, the DevOps pipeline. We can generate those application level SBOMs and understand the application component dependencies or the dependency, the microservices dependencies that they rely on. Now let's just step through quickly how it works. Uh, this is a lightning talk, so I'm going fairly fast. First of all, as I indicated, if you are a API or microservice developer, you register your microservice to Ortilius. Now you can do that with a TOML file, um, or you can do it manually, or potentially we'll be able to do an integration with Backstage to get that done. When you register it, the initial time you register it, we call it the base version. So now we know you have a base version of that, uh, that service. But as that service changes, we start tracking versions. So that's how the microserv microservice versioning co comes into play. Now, if you're an application team, you also create a base version. And you create a base version of the, the microservices that you consume. Again, you can do this manually or you can do it through a TOML file um, and add it to your CI CD pipeline. Now, once we begin tracking these changes, then we, we have both microservice versions and application versions. Each time a microservice changes, a component's updated, a new application is created. So now we begin a cadence. Now there's data that we pull when we do that. When we have a new microservice update, we start pulling its, its software composition analysis so that we can aggregate that data up to the logical uh, level. So for each service, we're gonna pull in the readme information, the CVEs, the, the license consumption, the SBOM data uh, basically, and even your swagger information if you, cho if you choose to, to uh, provide that to us. Now Ortelius does its work. It says, okay, I have a version of a microservice that's new. It's got a new SBOM, it's got a new CVE. I'm going to aggregate that up to every logical application that's dependent upon that, uh, that, that microservice. And when I do that, I'm gonna generate a consolidated SBOM at the application level. And I'm gonna show all of the uh, vulnerabilities now in a consolidated way. So now the application team has insights on how their application is changing over time, even when they are not the ones making the changes. And this happens in a microservice architecture when microservices are proper, properly reused across teams as opposed to constantly being recreated or copied. 
So the results is Ortelius makes it easy to answer where are we using log for J. So because we have that information, because we track the uh, open source packages for every microservice that we pull in, we're going to keep a, a, a basically a massive database of all of the open source packages that are being used. And we and Ortelius can show you that data um, in, in many different ways, including saying, tell me where Log4j is running and being able to see every application version or every microservice version or an environment where that uh, particular version of that open source package is running. Thank you so much. I hope that gives you some insights on what we're doing at Ortilius to help uh, IT organizations begin consuming and using SBOM data. It's critical. It's the, the core of starting zero trust policies and just policies in general and how your, your supply chain is managed within your organization at each application and microservice level. If you're interested in helping out, we'd love to have you. Visit us at ortilius.io. You can follow us on uh, Twitter or you can follow me. I am at uh, Tracy Reagan. You can find me on LinkedIn at tracy-reagan-oms. And if this is something you want to chat about, I am always happy to talk. You can reach me at this, uh, at this calendar uh, link uh, and you can find that on the uh, deployhub.com website. Thank you so much, and I hope everybody has a fabulous holiday.